yeah, I'm in my little studio right now and telling you the story of Narsimha as I promised you guys. So, it's a very interesting story and also a very well-known story. But I think you guys will like this ver- this version of the, the Narsimha story which has more dialogues and it's really fun. So, before I start, smash that like button. Now, let's go. Narsimha, playing by the rules. After the death of his brother Hiranyakasha, Hiranyakashipu was seething with rage. He not only wanted revenge but also wanted to teach Lord Vishnu a lesson. There was only one way to do it, with the help of a boon from Lord Brahma. And so Hiranyakashipu went off to the mountains to observe the severest of austerities because the boon he wanted was not simple either. For several years, he observed fast and chanted prayers until Lord Brahma appeared. What is it you desire, my child? Why have you called upon me? Lord Brahma said, a glow emanating from his body. Hiranyakashipu fell to his knees with folded hands. Lord, I wish to be the most powerful king, undisputed in all the three worlds. Let no one be greater than me in the terms of physical or mental strength. Let no known creature or living being be able to defeat or kill me. No man or animal, not during the day or night. Neither outside, nor indoors, not on land or water, and with neither the use of aerial weapons nor handheld ones. When a devotee demands, Lord Brahma delivers. He he granted the boon without as much as a thought to how it might be used. So be it, Lord Brahma said, granting Hiranyakashipu the boon of being undefeated. Hiranyakashipu was all powerful now. For there was no one to challenge him. He gained control of all the three worlds and killed anyone who dared to oppose him. Soon after he declared himself as God, since he was the mightiest and there was and there was no one to challenge his claim, he considered himself more powerful than even Lord Vishnu and forbade his subjects from worshipping any other god but him. There is no greater power than me. You should all worship me. He thundered. He went on a spree killing Lord Vishnu's devotees. I am the only god there is. Worship me, he decreed. Strangely though, despite all the threats he issued to force everyone to pray to him, Hiranyakashipu was unable to change the loyalties, loyalties of one person, his son Prahlad. No matter what his father threatened him with, Prahlad refused to budge. It was not that young boy was st- stubborn, but his faith in God was unshakable. There was no way Hiranyakashipu could convince Prahala that his Lord Vishnu was not worthy of being loved and worshipped. Even when Hiranyakashipu issued the kill order for all Vishnu devotees, Prahala stayed put. There is only one God and that's Lord Vishnu, he would say. Others advised Prahalat to quit being foolish, but Prahalat would smile. He will protect me if any harm were to befall me. They told him not to test his father's patience and obey his commands. Prahalat would shake his head. Lord Vishnu is the only one to be obeyed. He turned to his father. You should seek forgiveness. He is kind and gracious. He will for- forgive all your deeds if you genuinely repent. How dare you tell me what to do? Hiranyakashipu thundered, his body shaking with rage. His voice echoed through the corridors. How dare you defy my command? He turned to his guards and yelled, Give him poison! Push it down his throat if you have to! Not wanting to offend their already angry king, the guards rushed to execute the command. They got the cook to add poison to Prahalat's food. All because I stayed the throat? The young boy asked, tears welling up in his eyes. He looked at the plate of poison food put in front of him. 
What are you waiting for? Push it down his throat. Hiranyakashipu yelled again. Before the guards could even react, Prahala had begun chanting Lord Vishnu's praise and eating from the plate in front of him. As the onlookers watched, stupefied, the boy finished off the meal, washed his hand, and walked off praising the Lord. The honesty of this boy. I will teach him a lesson he will never forget. Hiranyakashipu was already contem- contemplating his next steps. A mighty demon, Kritya, was then called to slay the young child. As soon as a trident hit Prahalad, it broke into pieces, leaving the young boy unharmed. Every- in- everyone in the crowd was looking at the spectacle wide-eyed. Hiranyakashipu told the guards to draw the boy into the river and drown him. Prahalad was put into a sack along with heavy boulders, rocks and stones. The mouth of the sack was tied off with firm knots and thrown into the river. Even as the soldiers watched from the river bank, the knots came loose on their own and Prahalad swam out. He walked past the guards with a smile on his face. In response to their raised eyebrows, he simply said, Lord Vishnu protects me. He is the protector. Hiranyakashipu now ordered that Prahalad be thrown off from the top of a cliff, but he returned home within a few days. Those curious about the miracle got only one response. Lord Vishnu is with me, always. An infuriated Hiranyakashipu ordered that his son be locked up with a pack of hungry lions. Let him learn what it means to defy me. This time, he won't come back alive. They will devour him without a trace. The guards promptly rushed off with the boy tied up in the chains and dumped him in the cage with ferocious, hungry lions. The next day, when the cage was opened, they expected to see the mangled remains of the young boy. Instead, the sight that greeted them caused their mouths to drop drop open in surprise. The lions were purring and licking Prahalad's hands as if they were domestic domesticated cats. He lives, the guard guards murmured, awestruck. Hirina Kashapu wasn't one to give up so easily. He ordered for the boy to be tied up again and thrown in a cage with poisonous snakes. The snakes made him a bed for him to sleep. He was tied up yet again and placed in the path of a herd of raging wild elephants. The elephants rushed past him, creating havoc all around instead. It was the soldiers and onlookers who ran for their lives. Prahalad stood in the middle of the ground, an oasis of serenity, as he prayed to Lord Vishnu with folded hands. The soldiers and eventually Hiranyakashipu too were puzzled that no matter what method they adopted to de- to try to end Prahalad's life, the boy emerged unscattered. He would simply point a finger upwards and say, Praise be to Lord Vishnu. It is he who protects all us all of us. Finally, Hiranyakashipu sought his sister Holika's help. He asked her to sit inside a raging fire with the boy on her lap. Hiranyakashipu was confident that the fire would consume Prahalad. But because of that boon that she had received from Lord Brahma, Holika would remain protected. A huge fireplace was readied. Holika donned her fireproof cape and with the boy on her lap entered the blazing fire. As the fire roared and grew hotter, a gust of wind caused the cape to slip off her shoulders. Little did Holika know know that Lord Brahma's boon would work only if the fire was lit on purpose and if there was no one to help her. Holika screamed for help, but the flames were too huge and too hot for anyone to come close. Every time someone dared to, the flames would leap out, driving them right back. When the fire finally died down on its own, Holika had been burned to ashes. Prahalad got up and sauntered past those gathered with no trace whatsoever of just having emerged from a storming fire that had consumed his aunt. 
aghast, the onlookers stared at Prahalad, but he only smiled and said, Praise be to Lord Vishnu. Hiranakashipu was be beside himself with rage. The demon king now decided to take matter in his own hands. Not only would he kill the boy himself, but he would do it in such a manner that no one would dare to follow his example in the future. Hiranakashipu summoned his son and ordered him to be tied to a pillar in the presence of everyone around him. He wrote, I ask you one last time. Where is this Lord Vishnu of yours? How is that you manage to escape death every time? I have always told you, Father, he is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Hiranakaship turned around to face the onlookers. He says everywhere. Does anyone see him? Do you? What about you? Do you see him? He asked the soldiers who shook their heads earnestly. So, None of us can see him, but he is everywhere, is it? He said in a mocking tone, turning around to turning around to face Prahalad, he pointed to a nearby pillar and asked, Is he inside this? Why can't I see him? Yes, Prahalad nodded with confidence. He is, he was and he will be. He protects you always, you say? Well, let's see if he can protect you today. Hiranakashapu walked to the nearby pillar and knocked it down. With a thunderous roar, the pillar came crashing down and out stepped the most gruesome creature they had ever seen. This half man and half lion caught hold of Hiranakashipu and dragged him to the threshold of the door. On seeing him, Prahalad went down on his knees and started chanting Lord Vishnu's name. The soft murmur of chants in praise of the Lord reached the ears of those present. Taking his lead, the others who were watching the scene unfold also folded their hands and joined. Meanwhile, Narsimha the avatar reminded Hiranakashipu of his boon from Lord Brahma. Neither man nor an animal, neither outside nor in those, neither in the sky nor on land or water, neither during the day or night, and with neither the use of aerial weapons nor hand-held ones. Isn't that what your boon was? I am Narsimha, half man, half fly animal, and I will kill you on a lap in the doorway at dusk with my own claws. He dug his sharp claws into Hiranakashipu's chest and killed him instantly, thus putting an end to all atrocities and restoring goodness in the world. Lord Vishnu in his Narsimha avatar crowned Prahalad as their rightful heir and king. The end. So thank you so much for watching today's video and also tomorrow will be um, uh, the, this, um, the Vamana story which is quite cute and interesting story. There's nothing much about this but I love the story for today and please smash the like button. I have been working really hard on this. I have spent so much time on just editing the videos. It takes forever to edit so please be nice and please like the video. And subscribe. It would be a great thing to me. So, see you next video. And bye.